Adam Cole is resourceful. He's slick. Oh, man. Ooh, on his head. Hey, it's your boy, Mist. I just want to remind you, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications. It helps me out more than you guys realize. And if you do, I just want to thank you and let you know I appreciate you. Hey, now let's get back to the video. Hey, oh! It's your boy, Mr. Faith, and we are back with this WWE Universe series, man. We're in Season 2, Episode 12. Uh, and today's a special one, not only because it's NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, but also because on the day that we're recording this, we officially hit 50 subs, uh, which is nice, man. We're way ahead of, of my personal goal that I wanted to reach. Uh, but we still have uh, quite a bit of way to go uh, with, with where I want to be and, and how quickly I want to be there, all right? Um, so, you know, hey, all the timestamps are in the video. We're going to get into this for you guys, okay? Alright, first up, we have a match. Uh, it's a Battle Royal match. And the winner actually gets a spot in the Elimination Chamber match for the NXT Women's title. Um, all of these women are either near the top of the contendership rankings or... They're high in the power rankings, or they've just been winning recently uh, on the May Young Classic show that we have during the week specifically to shine a light on the women. Um, while this is getting warmed up and, and kicked off, though, uh, I do want to talk more about the 50 subs, man. I want to thank all you guys uh, who have been subbed so far. Um, I do want to get to a point where we do like... Uh, we do like a giveaway i know that uh i mean we're we're quite a ways away but you know when i get to a thousand subs i do want to do a giveaway um and we'll probably give away like a, a copy of um you know 2k or, or something like that um so you know the faster we get there man the, the, the quicker we can get to it man but once uh, once we get there i'll probably start doing giveaways you know, semi-regularly because i want to get back to the community as well um, but I want to thank you guys, those of you guys that have subbed up so far, man. Um, also, if you want an input, if you want a direct input in the WWE universe, you know when you tweet at the WWE and stuff and they never listen, you can hit me up in the comment section and I will listen, all right? Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to make it happen, all right? Uh, if there's a title match you want to see or just a dream match you want to see or, uh, you know, a tag team you want to see be formed. You know, maybe you always thought, oh, it'd be cool if, you know, uh, you know, The Rock was on a tag team with, you know, Roman Reigns or something. I, I don't know. But if you want to see it, man, put it in the comments. Um, let me know. And, and you know, we, we definitely want to listen to the people. Uh, I'm making this all for you guys, so I want you guys to be entertained. Uh, so far, though, uh, Alicia Fox is looking pretty dominant here. Um, Alicia Fox is one of those women, she's just been winning a lot of matches um, on the uh, on the show. Um, she's been in these situations before, though, in Battle Royals and, like, you know, Chance, she's had chances to have a shot at the title, and she's always come up short. So this is, I think, a, a pretty big match for her. Uh, Liv Morgan, uh, Maurice, they are people that are near the top in the, in the contendership for the title. Um, they're kind of floating around up there. So I figured, you know, I would give them uh, both a shot. But, of course, I guess Maurice uh, isn't floating around there anymore. Um, and then Shayna Baszler, she's just been uh, it, really in some good matches. Um, she's high up on the power rankings. Um, so, you know, we figure we give her a shot, too. And, I, and honestly, frankly, I think she's a little underrepresented. So, uh, maybe I'm, I'm probably rooting for Shayna Baszler on this. But Alicia Fox, she definitely doesn't want this opportunity to slip away. I think a lot of people... Um, you know, we're officially on the road to WrestleMania. Royal Rumble is going to be right around the corner. 
Um, and they work together to eliminate Shayna Baszler. Smart, actually, because I don't think either of them could have taken her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then Alicia Fox lets her get the cheap shot. And you see my phone here uh, lighting up because, you know, it's weird like that. Um, I had it here for some notes, but I guess not. Uh, um, okay. Well, now out of these two, I mean, I, I don't really know who I want to win. I guess uh, traditionally I would say Liv Morgan just because I really don't like Alicia Fox all that well. But Alicia Fox has actually been kind of dominant in this match. Like if she, if she ended up pulling it off, I mean, she's taken part in every elimination so far. It would be a pretty dominant performance to get a spot in the elimination chamber. I don't know if she's going to be able to get her over here, though. We'll see. She's been struggling for quite some time. And she doesn't. She doesn't. All right. Her stamina. I don't know if that drains both of their stamina. How that works exactly. It's been so long since I've played a battle row. But apparently. Ooh, oh, my gosh. I thought she was eliminated there for sure. Okay. Okay. I like this maneuver. I like this. Okay. She's got a finisher. Is, is this her finisher? I'm not entirely sure what her finisher yeah, it looks like a finisher to me. Oh, she's low on stamina, though. Alicia Fox capitalized, gave her some breathing room. But she can. Oh! Oh! And Alicia doesn't want anything to do with that. But she's got her up. She's throwing her back over. Is she going to get her over this time? All right. She doesn't get her over. Oh, now live. Oh, psych. Psych. You thought you had her up. Oh, psych. D double psych. All right. Yeah, you thought you had a dad. I don't know. Something my friends and I used to say, I guess. Maybe you guys wouldn't understand. But Ooh, sly move, sly move. The inside, forget it, the inside joke. Amongst maybe a few viewers out there. No, no. Alicia Fox, bro. That, that's a pretty dominant performance, if you ask me, man. Right. So next match, man. Straight into it for you guys. Uh, we got Lindsay Dorado, Grand Metal Elite. If I'm saying that right. TJP and Johnny Gargano, man. Um, they're competing in a ladder match. Uh, they're going to climb the ladder, grab the briefcase, which is going to contain a contract. Um that, of course, will allow them to compete uh, in the Elimination Chamber match that will be held uh, for the Cruiserweight title, man. Um, elimination Chamber this year is going to be something exciting because we're pretty much uh, exclusively doing Elimination Chamber matches. Instead of just doing two matches, um, I think we're going to do four. Something crazy like that, so... Uh, WrestleMania is is the end of the season, so after this, uh, we would go into season three, um, which I think we'll probably successfully do a third season, considering uh, WWE 2K22 has been pushed back to uh, January or, or March or something like that of next year. Um, and at the time we're recording this. Uh, it, you know, we're in October, so. Oh, oh, psych. Oh, psych. But uh, first one to, to climb to the top, obtain the contract, uh, will be able to sign it, putting themselves into that match. Uh, and honestly, these cruiserweights, man, it's a lot of high flying, a lot of action. Uh, I enjoy watching their matches, man. 
Johnny Gargano trying to trying to <laughs> bring that ladder into play, but uh, apparently he's had he's had enough. Okay. Um, so again, same, the same situation is with the women here. Um, they're just you know people that are near the top of the power rankings or the the championship contender uh, spot. You know, Johnny Gargano is always hanging out up there. And, and again, like Alicia Fox, you know, he's had a couple of these opportunities as well. He just hasn't been able to to really convert. Um, and, and some of these guys um, are, are, you know, don't really have a bunch of opportunities. You know, they're not awarded the same opportunities, but they've been doing well in matches. Um, right now, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe both of them are members of the Lucha House Party. So, um, you know, who knows? They might not care who wins, but uh, if they're smart, they get into the ring. I said people get in the ring and get him off that ladder. He, he, he got that uh, going pretty well but they're they're not gonna let him yeah they're not gonna let him continue to have that uh, I think at this point though the next person that gets up there successfully will, will probably be able to get it down I mean, it, that thing if that thing isn't uh, ready to be grabbed off of that hook at this point who, who really knows for sure oh oh yank like sucker. All right. Um, and again, like last match, man, we see Johnny Gargano being kind of dominant. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's going to be a sign for tonight's pay-per-view. Uh, you know, people who have had their shots uh, finally cash in on them. Um, but you never know. Uh-oh. Psych. Sucker. All right, uh, <laughs> he just he just manhandled him too. Jeez. Ooh. Psych. Suck. <laughs> All right. Lots of lots of uh, lots of action going on, man. Lots of flying off the ropes, ladders falling everywhere. People grabbing their legs around other people's heads and flipping their bodies places and <laughs> I, got, I would say her I would say her Karanos but I feel like I mean maybe that's just a reverse her Karana like if you do it from the back I, I know how bad that's, that that sounds out of context I guess but uh, alright there you go okay mm, yikes that's a power bomb not on because that's the power bomb because you get your own weight and momentum into it and then we rip that dude down to earth and then you throw him on top of the steps on top of that i feel like now he's going to go try to get the lat like get the briefcase he got caught up in the animation got caught in the matrix whoop <laughs> that dude that actually seems some of this stuff is like obviously like glitching like the game is it meaning to perform like that? Like that's not an actual animation in the game. But the fact that like I feel like that would happen in WWE. Somebody would be sliding in, somebody just leg drop them as soon as they get in there. Why even let him get up? So it makes perfect sense. I think he's got his comeback, his signature. Okay, just the ladder just fell for no reason. Um, he just drove that dude into the turnbuckle. Uh, I believe is this Lince Dorado or is that? I do, I think that's that was Lince Dorado. Maybe it's Lince or Lince or something. I don't know. I'm American. I pronounce things um, incorrect most of the time. Also, man, let me know if you guys are, are from anywhere outside of the U.S. watching this, man. I think he's gonna have this. He's gotta have this, right? No, no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Looks like they're not okay with whoever wins it out of them, right? The Lucha House Party is only unified for so long. They, they could probably not be on the Lucha. They could probably be like, both not members. I wouldn't know. Who knows? 
But I feel like they'd have to be because there's not many luchadors in WWE. It's them and Sin Cara and Kalisto. It seems to be about it. Sin Cara and Kalisto, man, they used to be a great tag team. Sin Cara just had too many botches. You can definitely tell you he wasn't. Um, You can definitely tell that they were giving him opportunities and he just wasn't taking advantage of it in WWE. But yeah, this has got to be it here. Johnny Gargano's not even trying. And he's got it. That was a good match, actually. I like that he won. Alright, so much of the same here, man. Is This is the last NXT takeover before Elimination Chamber. Uh, they're doing another qualifying match for Elimination Chamber here. This is for the NXT title. Um, well, not this match, but this match, whoever wins, will be in the Elimination Chamber uh, match for the NXT title. Um, at the Elimination Chamber, there's going to be five Elimination Chamber matches. So make sure you guys catch that episode. Um, but there's going to be plenty between now and, and then for sure. Um, the road to WrestleMania, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm hyped. This is like the the first part of the season is interesting always to see who who does what, who goes where. Um, oh. oh, second part of the season though is like, yo, we're heading to WrestleMania. It's good stuff, man. And we're gonna have a nice build up for you guys too. At least at least that's my plan. Oh, he, he tried to hit him with a headbutt in his head. Met the Big Show's fits. So we got, uh, for some of you younger people that might not know, we got Rikishi in there. Uh, Shelton Benjamin, uh, who I always thought was underused. Um, Big Show, and then Velveteen Dream, man. Shelton Benjamin, Shelton, by the way, in case you didn't know, and again, possibly for some of you younger people, uh, Shelton Benjamin is the reason that they got that animation in the game where you can stack the ladder against the other ladder and then you can run up it and spear somebody off the ladder. Yeah, he yeah, he's he did that in real life, my guy. I think someone else, maybe maybe one or two other people have done that as well, but I'm pretty sure he was the first. Oh that move look look looked like it was dangerous. For Big Show's neck. Alright, okay. Yeah, man, these boys moving quick out here. Oh, uh, he's got him in a roll up, but. Oh. So this is just a a, a, a fatal four way. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. So this, this is a, a fatal four-way, but I believe it might be elimination uh, since they're competing for who gets to, to go into the elimination chamber. Um, you know, they, they're, they're having a, a little mini elimination match themselves. This is different, though. You know, this is different. It's one thing to have an elimination four-way match. Um, it's another thing to have an elimination uh, six-way match with the title on the line inside the structure that is uh, Elimination Chamber. Oh, he, now he's got him with the roll-up. Oh, neither of them fell for it. It's kind of actually, I like the, the matchups here. You got the big guys fighting on the outside. You got the small technical guys fighting on the inside, but these guys are really smart. I think they, they would team up, you know, like on the big show or at least get one of the big guys out. Ooh. Maybe their strategy is to get each other out and just let these Colossals go at it. And then after, after the, you know, everything's said and done with them, sneak in and get a victory or something. show is brought to you guys by uh, Chris Refreshing H2O because I don't have any sponsors. Um, 
I guess it's falls count anywhere. Okay, I didn't know that. So, so he's out. Velveteen Dream, he's done. Velveteen uh, Dream, he was a guy that he was kind of up there early in the season, but then he kind of dropped down. He kind of like, I don't know, just stopped being featured in the matches. Um, so, you know, relevance is just the ultimate killer in WWE. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin, though, on the other hand, he's the opposite. He's down at the bottom and kind of up, up to the top. I think Rikishi had, might have had a title shot against Aleister Black, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then, oh, oh. Oh, psych. And, and Big Show, I mean, you know, he's, he's Big Show, you know. Um, and of course, he's, he's, he's out of here as well. Uh, let's see here. So we got Rikishi, Shelton Benjamin. Man, I didn't even realize that he was pinned for half a second there. <clears throat> Benjamin, throwing Rikishi to the ref. Oh. <clears throat> Man, I don't know why. I got, I got something in my throat. Just like that, it's over. Hit him with a super kick. <laughs> Yo, like I said, I like that Shelton Benjamin won because he, he was at the bottom of the rankings. Worked his way up to the top. A couple clean super kicks. And, uh, you know, hey, gets the dub. All right. Next match, cruiserweight title on the line. Drew Gulak with his newly won title via Money in the Bank cash-in. Who might be the only person to cash in successfully. Now that I'm thinking about it, but... Hold on, let me... Ryan, she cashed in, but she she lost. Randy Orton just cashed in and got destroyed. Who else cashed in? Did Lars Sullivan cash in and win? Who who had it for NXT? Was it Lars Sullivan? No. No, I think somebody cashed in on Lars Sullivan. And, oh no, someone cashed in. I forget who it was, but they cashed in while Lars Sullivan. And, Aleister Black were having the title match and Laura Sullivan pinned him and not Aleister Black. Um, that was a while ago. That was way back before Survivor Series. Um, I believe that that's how it happened. Um, and then is and then for the for, and then the, so that was the women's and then for the cruiserweight obviously. And I think Batista for the SmackDown title has yet to cash in. People are really uh, hating Drew Gulak, so as you can imagine, um, he's high up on the power rankings because he, he draws such a reaction. Hideo Itami, I believe on the same pay-per-view, Drew Gulak cashed his uh, briefcase in on uh, was the same night that Hideo Itami had won the opportunity to face the champion in the first place. So. That's why you're seeing this match instead of seeing uh, a rematch between Drew Gulak and Chad Gable. Chad Gable, though, let, let me tell you, man, he was a dominant champion. He was dominating the matches on NXT. He was winning champion. He was putting his title on the line. He was against formidable opponents. I mean, Aleister Black was facing the Papa Shango for a long time and then Rikishi. Uh, you know, he, he came in. Oh, no, wait. Did he win via... No, 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 okay. Yeah, but he, he came in, you know, he, he won a pretty good match. Uh, I, I believe, I, I don't know why I was saying uh, Aleister Black. Um, Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander, he'd win his title matches, but he would be losing like every other match. He would just scrape by with the title matches. But uh, Chad Gable was like undefeated for quite some time. 
Um, and, he, and it looked like he, he had it, you know, his business was getting taken care of uh, when Drew Gulak cashed in. Uh, he was probably on the verge of another win. That might be the Northern Light Suplex, I think is what that's called. Great execution from Drew Gulak. Hideo Tommy, an excellent striker. He's been on the rise, though, man. He's been winning matches. I put him in, in that contendership match. He ends up winning it. So, I mean, he definitely has earned his shot to be here. A lot of people question that about Drew. But, I mean, hey, he won the Money in the Bank match. So, you know, in a sense, he earned his shot. Right? He earned his title shot. Uh, he earned his title shot whenever he wanted it and he got it so people don't like how he cashed in but you know that, that's the nature of money in the bank um, cash in in the middle of the match you know cause some chaos uh, you know get both of your opponents you know they, they came in prepped for one another not prepped for a third person yeah I think it's genius Oh, I'll say, did he just tap? All right. So, Hideo Itami. Uh, this is an interesting matchup because Hideo Itami is more of a striker, heavy hitter. Drew Gulak, more of the, the technical wrestler. So, we'll, we'll see who does what here. But Oh, oh, that hard hitting coming into play. But see, but see that, that technical ring of... Uh, awareness that that prowess oh if he set him up uh, oh but he's but yo but he just did it see the second time though I don't think he will live from that one yeah that's game yeah well short lived uh <laughs> title reign for Drew cash in your briefcase won swiftly I might add um you know, probably the most opportune manner, and then uh, lose it in your first defense. But congrats to Hideo Itami, man. Um, he's going to be facing some serious competition, though, at the Elimination Chamber, I'm sure. Um, but wow. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the next match for you guys. All right, I know we said we go to the next match, but I like seeing people receive. Oh, okay. He took his title a little aggressive. I don't know. Oh no, that's okay. I like when people first win the title watching that. Okay. All right, up next, man, we got a special one—a triple threat TLC Tag Team Championship match. Uh, shouldn't have to say much else, man. Let's get into it. All right, so TM61. Uh, have actually been pretty um, resilient champs, man. Definite uh, underdogs as far as rating goes. I think they might be the lowest overall, or some of the lowest overall people on the roster. Um, but nevertheless, they won the titles, and then they put the titles on the line uh, seemingly every chance they could get and um, have defended them the entire way. However... Uh, in this last week, and for those of you, you know, that have seen, uh, they lost a cage match to Rusev and Aiden English um, in the Velocity program. And then uh, on NXT just this last week, uh, Aikman and Razor beat them. And then on the Velocity program, Aikman and Razor won a match with, like, Brazongo and some other people who were, like, former champions or have been up there on, on, on the championship, you know, rankings. So they earned their shot for sure. Um, you know, everybody feels like they earned a shot. And, of course, Team 61, they're not running from uh, – Shane Thorne is one of them. I finally learned one of their names. I think that's the dude with the tattoos. I don't know who the other guy is. Um, but, uh, you know, they're not running away from any challenges. And to be honest, I've kind of grown to like them uh, as a championship – or as a tag team champions, man. Uh, 
just because they've they've been so resilient, they've you know been pulling out the victories. Not always the prettiest, but uh, they're coming away with the dubs when they need to uh, to retain. So uh, I do think that Ake and the race are are the ones to watch out for, though, as they they probably got more momentum. They probably deserve the shot more than Rusev and Ake. Probably the more well-rounded of the two. But then again, uh, this is something where you got to climb the ladder and get to the top to win. So those are some pretty big boys. So you, you know how WWE is with those guys in the ladders. Historically, not very great, you know. So, ooh, table versus ladder versus chair. Okay, chair gets thrown the fluff out of here. Oh, then he gets beat down with the table. Okay, Rusev showing off that Bulgarian strength, Bulgarian brute strength, and then he gets punched in the gut and then whipped around like a, like a child. Okay, this is where it gets dangerous though. Aiden English is definitely the underdog of the Rusev Day tag team, which I think I might have said I might have referred to them as the New Day tag team uh, on a couple episodes. I you know, obvious mistake. Um, <laughs> There we go, okay. Uh, but he's definitely not the person you want in there by himself with the tag team chance. Um, especially when the objective is going to require you to get up to the top of the ladder. Uh, he's just not going to be able to do it. In fact, they might have some double teaming opportunities. Um, he's in the corner and says, bring it. The dude says, okay. Just lifts him up and chucks him like a rag doll. Hits him with the double chop on the other end. Oh, oh, okay. He's showing some power from the dude. All right. I I, I don't know their name. Someone's calling him the dude and him. And then uh, it's sad that the tag team champs and that they've been actually quite dominant. And uh, I still have yet to learn the names. <laughs> oh, it looked like he tried to hit him with an RKO there. He can lie and say that he wasn't. But that's what it looked like to me. up there and they're looking to retain again but Rusev is like nah -uh, son not if I got anything to say about it but they're like nah son we still gonna look to retain right here son look at him beating Rusev off oh oh but Aiden English coming in with the rescue now it's Rusev oh oh but the big boys do got the strength to tip that ladder over by themselves I'll tell you that now Rusev's out of here Aikam and Razor. Big boys with big weapons. I was going to say big boys with big toys, but... I'm, this is a semi-kids channel. I mean, this is not a kids channel. I don't make content for children, but I do understand that the target WWE audience is kids. I do understand that my audience is probably a lot of younger kids maybe teenagers you know uh, so I mean I you know I know how the mind works man I, I'm not trying to be you know test out here okay there you go. that's a good vocab word by the way if you don't know it look it up look it up alright oh he didn't see it coming I wasn't gonna say anything so I didn't want to give it away as if he could have heard me somehow from, from my announcer's table right right over. You, see, you guys see it over there on the side? I know you see it. Anyways, um, it looks empty, I know, but I'm there. I'm there. I got the Harry Potter Cloak of Invisibility on me, but I'm there. I'm, I'm actually right right below. You guys see my, my you know, you guys see my my camera, but I'm actually in that chair right down there. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Don't worry about it. Oh, but Rusev up top, and it looks like he's got it. I was distracted, pointing out my chair. Rusev came in from behind, hit him with a clothesline, dropped a couple elbows on some ninjas, hit some people with some super kicks, and uh, carried his team like he usually does, man. Excellent job.
man. These guys got to feel so happy. I love watching these title animations. Look at them. They're so happy they won. Rusev carrying them. Aiden English is like, woo, carry me some more. You did it, man. It's all you. And Rusev didn't even do that thing where he's like, no, no, you did it. Like, yeah, he knows he did it. Uh, <laughs> wow, man. Good, good to see these guys win, man. They, they deserve it. All right. Oh, Kyrie saying not waiting. So for those of you guys that didn't catch the episode, stop the video. Go catch the episode. I'm just with you. Um, but no, seriously, go catch the episode. But if you don't want to do that, I'll tell you right now. But it, but I recommend catching the episode because it was funny. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so maybe two episodes ago. Um, so basically, Carmella. Uh, was out in the ring, opening up the show, uh, show opening promo, man. She called Kyrie Saint out to the ring, said, hey, I'm going to finish this once and for all, man. They've had a long rivalry. And uh, she she wasn't quite sure that she was done. Uh, I thought maybe she, she might have been done. I thought maybe they might have been done. But, um, you know, she wants to finish it once and for all. They had a, a back and forth. Uh, where really Carmella didn't make much sense. I mean, she called her out there, and then she told her to leave, and then uh, she said, let's fight, and then Kyrie Sandin said, okay, let's, let's do it right now. And then uh, Carmella, who was the person that was like, yeah, I want to finish it once and for all. Let's fight. Uh, you know, being all heated and stuff, she was like, nah, let's wait. I don't know. It was kind of weird to me, but... Uh, oh, that's a maneuver. I don't know what maneuver it was, but that's a maneuver. Uh, all right, man. But uh, Kyrie Sane was, was actually firing back uh, with some stuff that made a lot of sense, of course, you know. And then, um, you know, hit her with a cheap lips comment, right? Which, uh, you know, was probably some fourth wall... Uh, you know, breaking with, with Carmella's, uh, I think, her, her badly done lip job uh, in real life. Uh, I, I would hope that those aren't her actual lips, because, wow. Um, but then again, I would hope that she didn't pay for those lips, because, wow. Um, so, you know, maybe Car uh, Kyrie Sane was making some sort of reference to that. Maybe she was making reference to, you know, the fact that she's talking tough and she wasn't backing it up. Who knows? Uh, but I think we know. Um, but that being said, though, I mean, Carmella is obviously best in Kyrie Sane. Uh, she, I mean, beat her just heads up, just straight up, uh, quickly, too, uh, to, to get the title. Then I think she retained the title against her once even. And quickly at that, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, this might be the longest single match, uh, singles match we, we've had against them. Oh, you know what, though? I think Carmella won in like a, like a five-way match or something. Carmella ended up winning, not even pinning Kyrie Sane, but she did, fight, she did face her one-on-one. -on -one. She had her in her little finisher there. Kyrie Sane smarts her roll out. Like I was saying, she did face her one-on-one -on -one and beat it pretty quickly. I didn't even face her twice. Carmella, very resourceful. I'll say that. Um, I know I made comments about her being more on the diva side, but she is actually a pretty talented wrestler as well. Um, I think she she sticks to a move set that works for her. And uh, I think that that is what makes people appreciate her as a wrestler. Plus, plus uh, she does have good mic skills. I, mean, I think anybody that gets their own custom taunt, like in the game and stuff, you know, they, they have good mic presence. They, they obviously are drawing their fans' attention. So. I like her as a wrestler. I just think that you know, Kyrie Sane is, is better. But what do I know? Definitely not uh, not looking better here. She got her in the submission again. I don't really know what it's called. Some sort of leg scissor, head choke thing. But uh, it works. And she makes Harry Sane tap out. So it looks like they really are finished. Uh, I don't think you can get 
more of a dominant series of wins over somebody. To win the title against them, to retain against them, and then to call them out and retain against them again. Um, I think it's safe to say that as good as Kyrie Saint is, she probably won't be getting any more title opportunities this season. Capiche. All right, up next, we got Adam Cole versus Lars Sullivan. NXT Championship on the line. Main event, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, yeah also a cage match. I forgot. That, that, that is what else I could have said. Um, so, I guess this, this goes back to right after Lars won the championship, Adam Cole, you know, was talking trash. Uh, you know, me and Adam Cole. Uh, so he challenged Lars Sullivan to a Survivor Series match where it would be the Undisputed Era versus whoever Lars Sullivan could assemble. Sorry for, for hitting my mic, making a noise probably. Um, and so Lars Sullivan got the, um, the guy he just beat, you know, got won the title from and now it's from Black. Um, I think uh, some other, some other people were in there as well. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, um, needless to say, undisputed era. I think that they clean swept them in Survivor Series. Uh, so of course, you know, Adam Cole's been going around, you know, like I'm the champ, baby, you know all that stuff. Um, you know, just talking his crap, running his lips. Ooh. And uh, uh, also, I mean, you know, he, he's been winning matches along the way. Actually, everybody has. Um, for a while there, uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly were the NXT Tag Champions. Roderick Strong was getting opportunities at the Cruiserweight title. Um, so, I mean, you know, it just makes sense that... Mm, uh, that Adam Cole would also be winning matches and, and getting his shot. Of course, they they had, um, you know, Adam Saw, so sorry, Adam Saw, so uh, Lars Sullivan, don't, just a combination of two names, I guess. Um, Lars Sullivan uh, had some matches with Robert Strong, had some matches with uh, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, Bobby Fish, and of course, you know, the whole squad is out there and they're, they're interfering, so they decided to make this match a cage match. But now that we got all the story out of the way, let's focus more on the match itself. Adam Cole's looking good in this. Uh, he's definitely been playing a lot of mind games leading up to it. And he looks uh, like he's winning this mentally for sure. But Lars Sullivan, I mean, he's Lars Sullivan. He's just, you know, he's big, he's powerful, he's strong, he's athletic, he's quick, he's explosive. Um... Say, can you go for a pin in a cage match? I wasn't sure if he could go for a pin. Oh, but I mean, look at that. Still up on his feet and just, just clobbers him. back and forth though man Adam Cole is resourceful he's slick oh, he's big man. Ooh, on his head on the top of his dome I guess you can go for a pin in the cage match you got a two count out of that one maybe try to escape I feel like if you would have tried to escape there you would have got you would have gotten out Uh-oh, he's got him in a little submission maneuver here. Okay, he's really cranking it, man. He's got a lot of leverage in on that. Ooh, ooh. Let up a little bit to try to reposition, maybe. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. Adam Cole's slimy, squirming his way out of that one. Breaking the eyes. Like I said, he's resourceful. Um, but jeez, Laura Sullivan, man. He's an animal of a human, really. He's, 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 might not even be human, but, 
but everybody bleeds. Every animal bleeds. So, and yeah, yeah, he's gonna win the title there, man. Adam Cole, he's doing his thing, man. He was sticking and moving. He was bobbing and weaving. He was, you know, getting his shots and. and you know, you can tell he was kind of frustrating Lawrence Sullivan just mentally, man. He was there and just crazy, crazy moves. And then finally, I mean, he hits him with that brutal uh, knee and just busts him open. Uh, and, and that's enough for the one, two, three. I mean, that, that's a, that, you can't connect any more cleanly than that. Um, and it, it's the, look at how much blood there is already. He's bleeding for maybe a second there. And there's so much blood, so. Um, He's probably going to have to get rushed to the hospital. Um, but Adam Cole, NXT champ, Undisputed Era, looking like they're trying to be back on top again. Good win for him, man. Good win. Well, there you have it. That is the end of NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Um, the last NXT before the Royal Rumble and the Elimination Chamber. Uh, next episode is actually going to be the, the SmackDown before Royal Rumble. And then the episode after that is going to be the Royal Rumble. So uh, I'm very excited, man. We are officially on the road to WrestleMania. Um, and, you know, Royal Rumble is kind of the best time of the year, man. So this is probably the, the best part of this season. It's just starting now. Um, but we're going to take a look at the, uh, the power rankings. Of course, they're not going to be updated for what has happened tonight, but we'll take a look at the power rankings for NXT and May Young, man. So Pete Dunn sitting at the top of the power rankings and rightfully so. I mean, he's got wins over champions and stuff like that. He's been putting on great matches. Aikman and Razor, uh, you know, sitting at, at top of the power rankings as well, but maybe with this loss, uh, they'll go down. British Bulldog has been putting on great matches. And then, of course, just the usual suspects, uh, a lot of the tag team people because they've just been featured a lot, especially with our uh, tag team designated show. Um, they get a lot of matches in there. And really, uh, this is the best uh, WWE tag team division has looked in, in quite some time, so I really can't be mad at that. And for the women, as always, Alexa Bliss is still on top. Uh, apparently, her rival, Nikki Bella, is right underneath her Carmella is at third. I wouldn't be surprised if she moves up to second, maybe even first. Such a dominant performance she's put on. Uh, Ruby Wa Ruby Riot, who's been winning a lot of matches, uh, definitely belongs to... Definitely deserves to be up there. Definitely belongs. I was going to say belongs to be or something. I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, Becky Lynch, of course, as well. Uh, really, all of these women, you know, just people that we've been seeing a lot, um, and, and they're all been putting on great matches. So, um, this is what the power rankings look like for the men and the women. I hope that you guys enjoyed the show. Again, uh, you know, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. We're at 50, uh, so this is a huge celebration for us. Uh, but I want to get to 100, man, uh, before, you know, the, the end of, of this video game cycle. Uh, I definitely want to get to 100. Uh, so if we can make that happen, man, that, that I'd appreciate that more than you guys know. And also, tell me what you guys want to see, man. Tell me if there's matches you guys want to see, dream matches, all-time matches, whatever it is. Put it in the comments, and we'll work on it. That being said, uh, all the credit, all the glory, everything goes to God. Without him, I wouldn't have a thing, so I give him all the praise with everything that I do. Um, I love y'all. I'll see you next time. Till then, peace.